to do with myself growing up. And uh, they, all the advice they w would have for me was like, well, why don't you try acting, you know, you may like it. And I didn't think so, but I, I thought, well, okay. I didn't feel very much at home on the stage. And I got really lucky very quickly. Um, I think after four years of stage, I was sort of discovered in Holland for a television series. And, and from that day on, I've sort of been going at it. There were two films that sort of got the American eye, so to speak. Uh, one was Turkish Delight, which was my first ever film. And it's a beautiful love story. The next film that got uh, the attention was Soldier of Orange. And that sort of really helped me to realize that there was a possibility, maybe, mm -hmm. to to actually work in English. And uh, I'd done five or six German films, uh, which you know weren't really that good, but it was different from Holland. And so I got myself an agent when I was doing press for Soldier of Orange because it had a limited uh, release here in the States. So it started my whole international career, really, because of that film. The, the thing about acting is that you uh, have some, some sort of need Nobody's asking you to do this. It's you who wants to do this, you know, being a filmmaker. You don't really deserve anything. You don't. So you have to get lucky and, you know, uh, and see if you can find an audience who will hopefully applaud, you know, what you're doing. If they don't applaud, you, you're probably not doing the right thing. I thought it was a very uh, interesting undertaking. And the character sort of struck me as maybe, you know, something I could do, I could play with. And it really depended on the director if, if it would, you know, mean anything to him. Because, you know, some directors, and also, also the director being the writer, writer can be very precious about what they wrote because it took him a long time. And if I was going to do this, I had a feeling I was going to throw a lot of balls into it. Kevin was great. Uh, we, we hit it off and, and we sort of opened it up to a, a, a sort of a, a, a vaguer interpretation. There was jealousy in the role, which was so on the nose. And uh, I just felt, you know, I could do something else with it. And so we've been, we've been doing that every day, really. Just turn it, you know, turn the scene upside down and go, OK, <laughs> nice. let's see what comes out of it. I like it when characters in films have a bit of a, a mystery. It has to be open to interpretation so people can think whatever they want to think rather than laying it on them, you know, in a broad way. And it, it sort of keeps you wondering also uh, what, what the pur you know, what purpose or who's doing what. Or you can read the different, different characters depending on where you're from. You make the movie, I don't make the movie. Of course I work here and I do, you know, I dance and I, you know, I do my tricks. Uh, but it, it is supposed to be open to you as a viewer where you fill in the blanks. Yeah. I love the blanks. I think that's what makes the movie. It fascinates me that it's almost like if you do the prep work for the role and for the moments, and you do the aftermath, the moments you leave them alone, almost, almost blank. I think that's so much fun. It's hard to explain, but it's, it's sort of like you give it to the audience. And the other thing that I really like about the whole acting business is that there's a wink in there somewhere where, you know, where, you know, I mean, everybody knows this is not real. These are pieces puzzled together, and boy, it's a lot of work, and it takes a lot of thinking, but, you know, at the end, it's, it's an illusion that, that sort of is tied into a stream, and you have to believe it, and willing to, you, know, you have to be willing to, to go along. And it's not for everybody, you know. It's one thing that I don't do, I don't please everybody. In the magic flute, you got to come up with some magic. I mean, Absolutely. I know there's magic in, this, in the music, but in the real, let's say, this is sort of the real story that, that sort of runs parallel to the, the, the music right. story. I thought the challenge was to make it as sort of realistic as possible, so you could feel that there's a little bit of sweat there and, and that the language would be a little more normal, like normal people talk. And I'm called Dr. Noggle. I'm not playing the doctor, I'm playing Mr. Noggle. You know, it's, and if I'm playing Dr. Killer, I play uh, the person killer, or, you know, lover, of whatever. Right. It's, it's finding it very odd that, that it, acting tends to be about the profession that people have, you know, as a character. Mm -hmm. We play professions now, and I'm not interested in that at all. I, you know, I want to feel the blood and, you know, 
there's a certain amount of camp that is in there that is very funny and very much like a puppet theater. That's the part I like. And I'm not sure if I'm reading it correct. You know, that sort of needs to be seen when you see the film. The marriage of opera and film is not an easy one. It's not an easy one. It's just like literature and film and, uh, for instance, dance and film or poetry and film. They don't really uh, are, are good, good and bad together, you know. So he's, he's got a challenge on his hands, but I, I'd love to be part of it. Many of my movies have sort of been become cult films, and I'm not such a hot item to hunt for. I don't think I give them what they really want. I've had a few brushes uh, here and there that are very unpleasant. Uh, and when I talk to my colleagues, the, the first thing they say is, you know, your privacy. Privacy is so beautiful and delicate. And I think it's a treasure that, that you own and that keeps you sane. Uh, I, can, I can handle a lot of that. I can be uh, alone for months at a time, have it not bother me. I, you know, I, I have enough in my head. I can live for months on that. Mm -hmm. But uh, if they start invading the privacy, I get very, very sweaty and nervous and probably also a little pissed off which is not a great thing. Fans is a different, that's a different ball game. There's, you know, there's stupid people and then there's other people and there's also stupid fans. So you have to handle them in a certain way. But it doesn't mean that I, I think uh, when people come up to you, they're trying, most of the time, they're trying to say something nice. It doesn't come out, it doesn't always come out the right way. And some people are just so, uh, you know, whatever they are, shy, uh, flabbergasted. They think, you know, what they think you are is, has nothing to do with who you really are. It's, you know, their projection is bigger than you. The fans, I like them. What they gave me because of the internet, they tell you, they don't tell you that because somebody tells them to tell you or because they don't want to tell you. They tell you something straight from the heart. You don't know who they are. And what was really interesting for me was to see that I actually, that they actually could really deeply understand what I was doing. And in the beginning, I don't know, I never believed that acting was about communication. I thought it was just a bunch of, you know, tricks and, and make-believe, but there's pure communication if it works. And the thing about Blade Runner, which to me was, you know, my most unique film ever, I was part of it, you know, uh, was that the Japanese, you know, you name the people, they all got hit the same way. And in that way, you sort of put your arms around the world, you know, in one moment, and it's yours. I mean, all these people are suddenly yours and they live anywhere, and I think that's amazing. And what is even more amazing that it's 25 years later now and it's still that way.